So we now have a new Robin Hood, directed by Otto Bratist and uh, written by Ben Chandler and David James Kelly, nominally based on the story of uh, Robin Hood. You know, the, Surprisingly. Yeah, although actually based, as far as I can tell, upon the films of Guy Ritchie. Um, I mean, this has, the, this has the same relationship to history that King Arthur Daly, he's all right, eee, had to head to history. Well, you a, can kind of make this kind of stuff up. Yeah, you? of course, but because so much of it is, you know, mythologised anyway, although I, we have had other films sort of, you know, being much more chin strokey and much more sort of po-faced about it. I mean, we had Russell Crowe, didn't we? Russell Crowe, careful not to criticise his accent. Yeah, Russell Crowe's accent, which was a geographical pit stop tour of all places. I mean, it, it, his accent was, I'm sorry, there's no other. All over the place. It was and, all over the place. And Kevin Costner... Uh, walking along uh, Hadrian's Wall. He arrives at the White Cliffs of Dover and he walks along Hadrian's, Hadrian's Wall, Wall to, to, get to, to, to get to Nottingham. To get to Nottingham. I mean, classic. <laughs> yeah, OK, fine. So saying that a Robin Hood film is ridiculous is really nothing new. I mean, it's, you know, we, we have been here before. So at the beginning, we get this kind of, this voiceover which tells us, you know, look, this could be a history lesson, but you just get bored. And uh, so, so anyway, let's let's do something else. So, Taron Edgerton is, uh, is uh, he came on the show, didn't he? Yes. For... Kingsman well, he's, 2? Yes, Kingsman 2. Yeah, yeah. And he seemed like a, a smart guy and a nice guest and, you know, yeah. And, uh, and, and also, I remember from that interview, aware of the problems of the Kingsman. Yes, and actually he did a very diplomatic answer because you asked him about the, 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 the two very problematic sequences, both in Kingsman and Kingsman 2. And he did kind of, he went as far as he could towards saying, yeah, I know. But I'm certainly going to do the next one if they ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so Robert of Loxley has got, um, he meets Marion, who we meet actually trying to steal his horse. The whole other thing that the film does is it kind of take, takes the roles you think you know, but it turns them into other things. So she's trying to steal his horse. He's really, really impressed. You know, she says, oh, it's just a horse that's owned by a posho. And he says, well, I am the posho who owns the horse. And then they, they sort of, you know, glimmer at each other. And then the next thing is he's sent away to the Crusades, or more accurately, he appears to be sent away to the Gulf War. Because there's this thing with the Crusades in which they have bows and arrows, but to all intents and purposes, they've got, you know, AK-45s and machine guns and mortar fire and everyone wearing what looks to be f like flak jackets and the filming done in that kind of, you know, that really sort of edgy, sort of green grass uh, inflected way. It looks like a modern war movie. And there's one bit when they're in the middle of a siege in which they call in the rocks and these rocks start getting thrown and the rocks appear to explode. And you keep, keep expecting, you know, helicopters to come over the top and Jason Isaacs with a handlebar moustache to come down and start bossing everyone around. When he gets back... Oh, yeah, there's also this, this torture and there's, you know, extreme tactics and there's all that sort of stuff oh, going on. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And um, our hero steps in to prevent such harsh tactics, at which point he gets himself wounded. He's declared to be dead, but he's not dead. He gets back home to find his castle has been uh, overtaken, uh, impounded. Uh, Marion has taken up with a bloke from Fifty Shades of Grey. No. Uh, yes, exactly. And the roost is now ruled by Ben Mendelssohn. Ben Mendelssohn, who has decided to play the, the villainous sheriff as basically a Star Trek character who appears to have gone to some kind of Nazi fetish cosplay party and has come away with a full-length blue leather, what do you call it, you know, jacket that goes I mean just you see I think I, I have no idea how that would that garment would have arrived is it, is it a coat you're thinking of it, it's not it's, it's what you call the full thing like a trench coat it's it's a you know full length coat it's not a practical garment it's not an everyday garment anyway uh, thank heaven for Tim Minchin who is um a fry tuck or he's tuck and he's a fryer there's a lot of that somebody called tucker tuck tuck and he's a fryer and you go, I see, we're in good. Okay. Who, who is, you know, born and bred in Britain, obviously, but has clearly been watching too much Neighbours. What? The collection box from right under our noses at Sunday service. Oh, and the toll road last night, so... Who else knows about this? I, I came straight to you, but I suppose the Archdeacon should be told... No, 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 no. We don't want him gossiping to the Cardinal. But, sir, surely the Church... It's a law and order issue. I'm the law and order here. I can't afford to lose another penny. So, it's been a bit since your last confession. My conscience is clear. Is yours? Try as I might, mine's always a bit of a muddle. Well, be that as it may, keep your ears open in your little booth. Any talk of the thief, bring it to me. But, sir, with respect, the seal of the confessional is sacred. Nothing sacred till I've caught that thief and drowned him in a cage. Cancel Christmas. He's talking like a baddie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 
you remember in, in in Prince of Thieves, there was the story that Kevin Costner had insisted on taking over the edit because he'd seen a rough of it in which Alan Rickman was basically the star of the film. Okay, which he kind of was, which he was anyway. Even in the version that we all saw, it's like whenever whenever Kevin Costner was on with his feather cut and his, you know, his what do you call it? What do you call the bow and arrow? No, what do you call the thing that you keep your arrows in? Quiver. Quiver. Yes, that's right. With his quiver, with his feather cut and his quiver, everyone just thought, yeah, yeah, get on. We don't, we don't care about that. Just get, you know, get on. And then there's the Robin and Marit, all that stuff in the background. There's so many cinematic versions, all of which have their have their own flaws. Few, I think, are as flawed as this. Um, it's. It is that weird thing about, you know, let's take a story that everyone kind of knows and for which there's this strange affection and let's <laughs> let's try and give it a modern twist. I mean, the funny thing is there are certain moments in it, which I mean, Ben Mendelsohn chewing the scenery is the best thing in it. Because Ben Mendelsohn, it was like literally they've just gone, uh, Ben, uh, we think that take you did was a little bit understated. Would you mind just cranking it up a little bit? Oh, certainly. How much more fiendish would you like me to be? Well, we'd like you to be massively fiendish. We'd like if, you to be grimly fiendish. If, we'd like you to be grimly fiendish. If you could just swish, swish the bottom of your coat occasionally, that would be that would be fabulous. And and he'd I'd certainly do that. And and he does. And all the time that he's there doing that stuff, he's fine. Fine. There's that performance. And all the time Tim Minchin doing that stuff, it's fine. Okay, because he's quite funny and he's quite jolly. And then all the rest of the stuff, you just think, wh what? <laughs> what exactly? And the odd thing is that I I. There were moments when I thought, okay, if you're if you're going to go with the idea that this is how we're going to do Robin Hood, is it is it you know is it working? And all I could think of was the King Arthur movie, uh, and uh, the King Arthur Daily is all right. That literally, I kept thinking it's like someone sat down and went, "You see that King Arthur? That's a good idea. Just do that with Robin Hood. It's Ben Mendelssohn free." <laughs> 